President Biden completely failing as a leader, and Americans are, are, are unimpressed. The new poll showing only 45% of voters approve of his job performance, while 54% disapprove. Joining us now to discuss is former Navy SEAL and officer Jocko Willink and a leadership guru. Jocko, good to see you. I commented, you look kind of tough there, mean at us, but one of the funniest guys you'll ever meet. Um, listen, you know leadership. Uh, that's, your, that's your business model. You did it in the military, you do it now. I think Joe Biden's policies are bad, but also I think his leadership is bad. What advice would you give a guy like Joe Biden to improve his standing as a leader for the American people? Well, one of the things that he's having a real problem with is one of the most important skills of being a leader, and that's being able to communicate your message. And being able to communicate that message and articulate it in a simple, clear, concise manner that people can understand what you're talking about. And unfortunately, you know, President Biden seems to have a very difficult time trying to communicate what his ideas are or what he's trying to get done. Just quickly, is honesty part of that as well? If you're a good leader, don't you have to level with the people you lead? Well, that was the next point I was going to talk about. I was going to talk about, I was going to talk about humility. And really, humility, that means you're going to admit when you make a mistake. That means you're going to own your mistakes. And that builds trust. You know, you're talking about trust. If, if something is clearly bad and everyone can see it, and instead of saying, yes, here's some mistakes that we made, here's some adjustments we're going to make to remedy that situation, instead, when you say, oh, no, that, that massive problem that you can all see, that's not a problem. Don't worry about it. That's what really breaks down the trust. It starts with a lack of humility, and I think we're seeing a lot of that, unfortunately, in this uh, situation here with the president. That's why I apologize to Sean at the top of the show, because he was trying to shut me up, and I kept talking, and the entire view, the audience can see it. And so no, you have to, fine. well, you do. You have to acknowledge it and say, okay, I'm over here flapping my gums, and he's trying to move me along. So I apologize. And moved along. Jocko, it's great to see you. And I actually, next month is uh, Vietnam Veterans Day. And I wanted to talk about this with you specifically, Jocko, uh, to get the chance to honor my dad's best friend, Gene Smith, who died last month, right before Christmas. And that would be Colonel Rayburn Gene Smith, U.S. Army, retired. Gene was a helicopter pilot, and among his many assignments, he was a Huey gunship pilot with the 1st Cavalry Air Mobile, the 1st Air Cavalry, 1st of the 9th, Vietnam, 1965-66. He flew in the Battle of the Idrang Valley. Now, I know I said that wrong, but that's how rednecks say it. And it, it was in service, Jocko, that Gene, as so many men do and women, found his calling. Gene grew up in Hat Creek, Virginia, in a house that didn't have indoor plumbing. But it was in flying a helicopter that he said that helicopter and I were one and the same. And he would say it over and over again. And coming up on um, Vietnam Veterans Day, I just wanted to describe the important, you to describe the importance of service to so many people. And just honor Gene, quite frankly. Well, let's talk a little bit about those Huey helicopter pilots. I think the numbers are 5,000 Huey helicopters went to Vietnam, 3,200 of them were lost in combat. Those guys, and I was a ground guy, I was on the ground, and those helicopter pilots in Vietnam that would go into these hot LZs like in the Idrang Valley and do whatever they could to support the guys on the ground, it's just incredible what they were able to do. And then, you know, the Vietnam War was, was extremely tough because the civilian populace confused the soldiers with the politicians that escalated the involvement in Vietnam. And when those guys came home from Vietnam, obviously we all know they were not treated very well at all. And so, yeah, I, I absolutely look forward to being able to honor these guys. I know on my podcast, as you know, I bring on a lot of Vietnam veterans so they can share their story, talk about what they went through while they were in Vietnam and what it was like for them to come home. And finally, for us to be able to give them what they've deserved for so many years, which is to be able to say to them, welcome home. Jocko, do they deserve, do we owe them an apology as a nation, those veterans, you think? Yeah, I think we do. And, you know, when, when you come home, and it was very tough in Vietnam because the system that they were using in Vietnam was individual replacements. So guys would go over there alone, 
they'd join a unit, they'd fight with that unit, then they'd leave the unit and come back alone. There wasn't a support system. You didn't, you didn't deploy like in World War II, you deployed with your battalion and you came home with your battalion and you stuck together and you rode a boat home for six weeks and you got to discuss things. These guys got in a plane and 24 hours later, they were leaving the jungles and the booby traps and the bullets and the bombs and they were on Main Street USA. And then to get attacked by hippies and protesters, it's awful. It's awful the way they were treated. So yes, an apology and more important, let's honor what they did and the sacrifices that they made. You're the best, Jocko. Jocko, thanks for being a role model too for a young man. You are the best. Thank you for joining Thank us. Thank you, sir. Thanks for having me. Thank you.